Many of you may not know what moving traffic offences are, despite thousands of them being issued every year. And even if you do, it's principally been the police that's been responsible for issuing these fines. But in June last year, the Department for Transport announced that all local councils will be able to apply for powers to issue these fines themselves, not taking the power away from police, but sharing the responsibility for issuing these fines under the Traffic Management Act of 2004. So welcome back, I'm the Black Belt Barrister, helping you to understand law. So just what are these moving traffic offences that could land you with a penalty charge notice on the spot? Well, these include things such as turning left or right, where it is banned and you're not supposed to turn left or right there which sounds quite obvious, but it also applies to no entry signs or even blocking the yellow box junction. Somebody asked me just recently what the rules are about entering a yellow box junction. The rule is simple, you cannot stop on a yellow box junction, except of course in the case where you're turning right. Box junctions are covered in rule 174 of the highway code and you must not enter the box unless your exit road or lane is clear. However, you may enter the box and wait if you are turning right and you're only stopped by oncoming traffic or by other vehicles that are also waiting to turn right. And at signal roundabouts, you must not enter the box unless you can cross over it completely without stopping. Which means regardless of whether you expect the exit to be clear or not by the time you get there, if you stop on that yellow box junction, you are contravening the regulations and liable to a fine. Going the wrong way in a one-way street, whether accidental or not, will also land you with a fine. Making an illegal U-turn, which is typically where there is a no U-turn sign, or anywhere else where the highway code prohibits U-turns, Driving in cycle lanes can also land you with a fine and failing to give way to oncoming road users. These are just a few of the top things that can land you with one of these moving traffic penalties. So the position now is that many local authorities may be enforcing these offences themselves. Many local authorities have taken a consultation with the public and invited views and criticism or support of the idea. So you may want to check your local authority as to whether they are taking this up as well. So what's the principal difference between the council being involved and just the police? Well, we all know that the police are not everywhere these days because their time is in such high demand but civil enforcement officers employed by the local authority may well be taking this up to issue these fines in significant numbers. So what do you do if you receive one of these PCNs, penalty charge notices? Well, they are typically going to be sent to the owner of the vehicle and almost always that's the person that it's going to be intended for. The first option you have is if it really was you and you did contravene these restrictions, then you can simply pay the fine. Typically you will have 28 days to pay this fine and it will normally be halved if it's it's paid within the first 14 days. But what if it wasn't you that was driving? Well, a similar procedure will apply as if you are alleged to be speeding. You can respond to this if it wasn't you that was driving. Perhaps you, as the current vehicle owner, did not own the vehicle at the material time that the alleged offence took place. Or if you did own the vehicle, that someone else was in control of the vehicle at the time and you can nominate that that person actually committed the offence and that it wasn't you. There's a stark warning here that I've talked about in other videos about accepting penalties for other people because that might amount to perverting the course of justice, which is a far more significant offence than most of these offences by themselves. You can of course just say that the offence did not occur, but you would be expected to have some kind of evidence to that effect, otherwise it's not likely to be believed. Either way, if you are challenging this, you should explain it in full detail and give full reasons clearly and send any documents and relevant evidence that you have as to why you shouldn't be liable to this penalty. If you receive a notice of acceptance from the enforcement authority, then it will usually state that you do not have to pay the penalty and that you'll see no further action. However, if you see a notice of rejection, that means they've rejected your reasons or evidence, then you've got two further options after that. First of all would be to pay the penalty charge because they've rejected your reasoning. The second would be to appeal to the judicator, and that's done by way of a notice of appeal, which should come to you with the notice of rejection. If you do wish to appeal, this should be done within 28 days, although if you do miss that deadline, you should still appeal if you really want to appeal, but you must give reasons as to why the appeal is late. That would usually have to be some real pressing reason as to why you couldn't deal with it within that 28 days. Illness is a typical example of that. So there it is, just a frank warning about these things. No left turn, no right turn, no entry signs, one-way streets, blocking the yellow box junction, making illegal U-turns, all of these kind of things local authorities may well now be enforcing the penalties for, so watch out for those. And in the meantime, please remember to subscribe and thank you for watching.